frequency response graphs and the easy way to read them. Now, frequency response curves can be useful for sort of getting an idea of how your headphones sound like and that could help inform the way we equalize our headphones. But do note that while you can kind of get an impression of sound quality by looking at these charts, they will not entirely describe how your headphones sound like. For that, I recommend listening to the earbuds or headphones in person or by comparing their sound quality on loudandwireless.com's sound samples page. Because ultimately, you and I, we already have the best sound measurement tools, the human brain and our own ears. I mean, I can try to convince you that this particular model has the best sound quality because the chart goes this way and that way, but it won't even matter. Because the way everyone perceives audio is different, it really depends largely on age, sex, and other factors like physiology and sound preference. Nonetheless, the graphs can tell a story, and as an example, I'm going to pull up the measurement that I made for the Sony WH-1000XM5. By the way guys, I've split this video into chapters so that it's easier to navigate to the parts you're interested in. And get subscribed and tap the bell button if you want to see more videos like this one. The full spectrum of human hearing from bass to treble is often shown on the x-axis, described as being from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. That is not really the case because there are many people who can actually perceive bass response below 20 hertz, even down to 16 hertz. While in terms of travel, most people reach their limit at 18 kilohertz. And only a very few people can actually hear up to 20 kilohertz, often people in their 20s. God, I miss being young, but that is also one reason why I say that if you're not above the age of 30, it's useless to invest in expensive hi-fi equipment because the frequency response that you're sensitive to will change with age. Anyway, the most sensitive region that we hear in general, I'm speaking of everybody in general, is somewhere in the middle between 800 hertz to 3 kilohertz. We are most sensitive to this range as a result of the way we humans have evolved over time because most of the everyday sounds we hear fall between 800 to 3000 hertz. I'm speaking about the human voice, the sound of babies crying, the sound of your coffee machine grinding beans, that sort of stuff. So keeping that in mind, let's try to classify what are bass frequencies, what are mids, and what is treble. Now, do know that there is no standard way to do this, so you may see variations as to the numbers, but I'm classifying it somewhat according to this book called The Complete Guide to High-End Audio, which is regarded as something like a Bible for audiophiles. I recommend that you read it, maybe even purchase it on Amazon. I've put a link in the description if you're interested. Anyway, First, you split the graph into three parts, bass, mids, and treble. Bass frequencies go from 20 hertz to 250 hertz, 250 to 2000 is the mid range, and 2000 hertz to 20 kilohertz is the treble or the high frequencies. The y-axis represents the gain in decibels or dB. You can also take it to mean volume, which is a very simplistic way of describing decibels. Now, most charts are averaged to zero decibels because that way it's easier to gauge which frequencies are louder or softer than average. So in the case of the Sony WH-1000XM5, we can see that its bass goes from plus 10 dB all the way to plus 5 dB. You'll notice that its bass has much higher gain than the other frequencies. That is normal because humans are generally less sensitive to bass frequencies, so in the context of headphones, you need to make the bass louder to compensate for that. So this is how loud the XM5's bass is. Some people may consider this to be 
not too bassy at all, and some people may consider these headphones to be far too bassy. In other words, it really depends on how you like your sound. From 250Hz, we can see that its mids are pretty flat all the way up to 1kHz, where we are starting to see something interesting. From here, we can see what appears to be some sculpting going on in there. Now, remember what I said about us humans being more sensitive to frequencies between 800 to 3000 hertz? This region is called the presence region. By tweaking it, you can sort of manipulate whether vocals are brighter and in your face, or more smooth and laid back in the background. And this appears to be an effort to make vocals sound a smidge smoother and less fatiguing by reducing the gain in certain places without making it sound too laid back. So what happens beyond 3 kilohertz? To give you a better understanding, I want to show you a side-by-side -side comparison with the AirPods Max. Here you can see that the AirPods Max is a little more aggressive with the mid-range, but from 3 kilohertz to 6 kilohertz, there is a pretty significant dip, negative 20 dB in some places. Now, this is a pretty common technique used to increase the perception of sound staging so that your music sounds more spacious. And indeed, if you compare their sound samples on loudandwireless.com, that is exactly what you'll hear. Now, back to the XM5. Notice that there is a drop at 15 kilohertz. Now that is pretty weird. It's almost like a deliberate cutoff to prevent the headphones from distorting too much in the treble. But as you may recall, most people can only hear up to 18 kilohertz, and we are more sensitive up to 10 kilohertz. So even if there is a cutoff, it's not likely that most can hear a difference unless your ears are trained to catch that faint sensation of airiness in the sound. And by the way, there is a reason why YouTube cuts off the audio at 17 kilohertz on iPhones. Number one, it saves on bandwidth. And number two, it does not really impact sound quality, at least not to the extent that most people can hear. So that is how I read frequency response graphs. Smash like and share if you learned something, if you found this video helpful, or tell me in the comments if you're an expert and you wish to correct me on some things. Because personally, I want a community in which we can all learn and grow together. And not, I'm the expert, and you have to listen to what I say because that is simply not true. Either way, thanks for watching, and if you want more content from this channel, get subscribed and tap the bell button I don't know why I did this. Get subscribed and tap the bell button to stay notified. I'm also on Discord, so if you have Discord, come and join the chat. Link is in the description. Now guys, if you want to know what are the best earbuds of 2022 going into 2023, click here to watch this video or watch another video from this channel.